Here's a brainless, very profitable futures trading system. It's so easy. The other day, I saw a pigeon with one wing, one eye, type two diabetes, make so much money using this exact setup. The pigeon's name was Ferdinand, by the way. And I'm gonna walk you through exactly how you can copy this process and absolutely crush it in trading. When you're talking about futures trading, either the NQs, the ES, the NDX, if you're doing a prop firm, I'm gonna walk you through a way that you can absolutely guarantee how you are going to perform and how you are going to see a setup ahead of time. You ready? Awesome. We are gonna dive right up in this thing because I've been working on brevity and I'm gonna show you from step one all the way to step Z, how you can initiate this system. I'm gonna go from this equity, which is Microsoft, and I'm gonna go in trading view and do a boop to trading icon desk, just like this. Now I'm going to go into the icon and make sure I click sync and layout. I'm gonna make sure I have symbol and crosshair synced up. Then I'm going to go ahead and pull up the E-minis, all right, ES. Now again, this works on the NQ, this works on gold, this works on oil. I prefer when I trade futures, I trade the NQ or the E-minis. And full disclosure, I probably only take somewhere between six and 12 futures trades a month. If you are looking to get more futures knowledge, I'm sure you're aware of this, but we do have an entirely free program created by Arabia, who is an absolute trading monster. And it's, well, complimentary. So go to reallifetrain.com, go to free courses and check out her futures program. It's really sensational. And she gives you even more step-by-step -step instructions on how to create consistent cash flow trading futures. And she has helped so many traders do just that. So here we go. E-minis. Now my step, uh, that was not the E-minis. Here's the E-minis. Step one is on the left-hand side, I select a higher time frame. The higher time frame that I personally choose is the hourly chart. Now in futures trading, this is my opinion, of course, but when I said earlier that you can guarantee what you're going to do, I like to have a bias. And the bias is this is how I'm going to take a trade no matter what. Now, are you going to follow your rules or are you going to follow your system uh, it depends on how bad you want to make money trading. I mean, that's really what it's going to boil down to. I personally love money. I think it's awesome. So I want to make a lot of money. So therefore, I stick to my rules always, without question. On the left-hand side chart, I'm going to have the hourly, and I'm going to pull up the 20 exponential moving average. Feel free to tweak and adjust this to see what suits you best, but I am letting you know what I use. All right, the 20 EMA, and that's it. Left-hand side of the chart is the 20, and the right-hand side is gonna be the three-minute with the 10 EMA. And here is the best part. What I'm looking for, the 10 EMA strategy does not change, but what I'm personally looking for is the left-hand side is gonna help me determine the overall trend direction. Am I going bullish or am I going bearish? How do I make that decision ahead of time? How will I even know night prepping for the next day, what direction I'm going to take the trade? Well, what does it say on the left-hand side of the chart? Am I above the 20 or below the 20? If I'm above the 20 EMA on my hourly chart, guess what direction I'm taking? That's right. Me and Ferdinand are only going bullish. That's it. Am I going to take a bearish trade? No. Why not? Because the primary trend is bullish. What if you could have made money on a bearish trade? Yeah, you could have. I'm sure of it. There's tons of money to be made all the time. You don't have enough money. I don't have enough money. No one has enough money to catch every single trade all the time. It's irrelevant. Find the one that you want to make. 200 good trades a year. Net is my goal. Let that sink in. 200 good trades per year. If out of those good trades, I get five or 10, maybe 20 great trades, I'm extremely happy. 200 a year, that's my aim. Left-hand side of the chart. Here we go. We're obviously bullish. So the right-hand side on the three-minute chart is I'm looking for the first bear candle to close above the 10 EMA, which is the 10 EMA strategy, or the first bull candle to close below if I'm shorting. But since I'm not, and since right now we are above the 20 EMA, I'm only looking for bull setups. Therefore, this one, 
actually happens to be case in point, a perfect setup right here that happened about an hour and a half ago. I didn't catch this particular trade, unfortunately, but you could have because on the left-hand side, you know, to be bullish. And here's your two bear candles closing above the 10EMA. These also happen to be the first bear candles to close above the 10EMA, which is of course, well, the 10EMA strategy. First bear candles to close above. Now, the best part about this is there's actually two of them. So the entry would have been above the high, the stop loss would have been below the low of that bull candle. And that's not that many points. We're talking four points almost. And I'm looking for a 1.2 risk reward ratio. And I don't know if 1.2 would have hit. 1.22, nope, not quite. If I take it, let me just zoom in there. Okay. Zoom in a little bit more on the right-hand side. This stop is still below the low of that bull candle. Yes, it is. And this makes you a 1.2 risk reward ratio right there. There we go. I figured, I thought that trade was going to work out. So again, obviously depends on how wide your stop is. Depends on how wide your profit is. But what I'm doing is I'm trying to capture as many 1.2 R winners, 1.2 risk reward winners as early as I can in the month. And then once I have a four R's realized on the month, I will then start going for larger trades. But as you can see in this particular example, personally, I'm not looking for bear trades because the overall trend is right now bullish. Going back to a previous volume video, which is right there. And I think a lot of you really enjoyed that video. Thank you so much for watching. And if you're not already a subscriber, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. What I'm gonna do now is walk you through the volume aspect of looking at what my predictions and thought processes are going to be for the e-minis. Now with your 20 EMA here, I'm gonna go ahead and draw a line. And this is gonna be a pretty cool little line. This line is gonna be the 20 EMA line. I'm gonna right click it and I'm gonna do sync in layout. What I'm gonna do now is get another blue line. That blue line is gonna be the exact same blue line, which is just telling me where the 20 EMA is on the hourly chart on the three minute. So now for me, I know that this is where we should be bouncing. I also can tell there was a huge, huge amount of bear volume here on this particular candle. That bear volume was also pretty close to this resistance. So in order for me to take a bullish trade, what I would need to do is I would need this to break above, make a new high, and then guess where I would set my limit by, number one. And number two, what direction would I be taking the trade? If you answered bullish, go ahead and give yourself a thumbs up because you are correct. How would I have known to be bullish? Well, because we're above the 20 EMA on the hourly. It's pretty simple, right? I would then, and I'm gonna draw this in a different color, I would then go ahead and plan for the trade to come down and I would set up a limit by 48.84 limit with a stop probably at 48.79 and I would expect it to pop up to 49, 48.90. That particular trade is purely 100% based on this volume, the trend and old resistance, new support. That's it. Now, what if I want to take a trade bearish? Well, if I want to take a trade bearish, I can go ahead and tell you what needs to happen because I know that we need to take out the 20 EMA on the hourly chart. Therefore, in futures, I'm always waiting for the trap to be placed because all of you know, futures are extremely trappy. Keep in mind, don't use the words, they push the markets higher, or they ran it up overnight, or they ran it up over down. There is no they who is trying to manipulate you out of your money. No one cares about you, okay? Your amount of money is so small compared to how much money is in the market. No one knows you're even there. There is no manipulation behind the scenes. There is no Wizard of Oz. It's buyers and sellers. That's who's moving the market. Buyers who want to go up, sellers who want to go down, people who are trying to buy, people trying to sell. That's who's moving the market. Therefore, what I'm looking to do is I'm looking for traps. In futures, I like to wait for buyers or sellers to be trapped before I take a position. So for me, I'm gonna wait for the E-minis to make a new low. At that point, we will have been below this low, below this low, and below this low. And we're gonna be below what? That's right, the 20 EMA on the hourly chart. At that time, once we are lower, I can then go ahead and set up my trade ahead of time, planning to go ahead and get in on the retest. Here we go, next trade, and the rollover. That would be the expectation. That would be the setup that I would take on the E-minis if we actually do in fact break down, which again, we may or may not, I don't know. All right, I'm back. New day, 
Got my baby boy, new RLT Polo, and eight points to the upside on the E-minis. Wanted to take the trade that I was recording and just take it and play it out so that we can kind of see what happens. And what you'll notice on the right-hand side, right, the trend is bullish still, and we have been interacting and bouncing nicely off the 20 EMA on the hourly. So when we got above this bear volume that I talked about, we closed above it, made new highs, we retested, went long at 4882.25, stop at 4877. And I almost got stopped out overnight. I mean, this was all asleep. So right here, uh, I love it, but we, we got close. But hey, close is only good in hand grenades and horseshoes, as you all know with futures. I love futures because of the ticks and very, very rarely ever getting slippage. And yes, that could have stopped me out. Now, if I had been here to watch that trade occur, I would have noticed huge bear volume. And once we close above that bear volume, I would have obviously played some longs in here because this bear volume is obviously extremely indicative of a trap. Same thing with this one, right? Bear volume, again, occurring at the 20 EMA on the hourly chart. And then market open, poof, ran into 48.90. So almost, almost eight points, uh, 7.75 points to the upside on five contracts. Hey, it's a good payday. Thanks so much for watching my futures trading setup and strategy. I hope you find it extremely helpful because if a two-year-old can do this and make money, I'm sure you can too. Shout out to my boy Ferdinand the Pigeon. Check on that diabetes, man. You can get it fixed. Anything is possible when it starts in the mind first. All right, family, you rock. Click that subscribe button if you're a dad. <laughs> and you're also a trader. Love you.